Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I've been asked to elaborate a little bit on Active House and the Active House um, Comfort Score. Um, um, I will I will go through my introduction a little bit quicker because it has already been uh, been um, presented by Yves Lambert and uh, also by uh, Marco a little bit. Um, so, Active House is a vision creating buildings for people and planet. Um, uh, as, as mentioned before, it uh, focuses on three aspects, comfort, energy, and environment. The idea is that it, uh, an active house creates healthier and more comfortable indoor conditions for the occupants with plenty of daylight, fresh air, uh, good indoor temperature, um, and the absence of uh, disturbing noise. The, the energy performance is uh, efficient, uh, uses smart energy sourcing, renewables, um, and uh, make make as much use from uh, from localized energy sources <clears throat> uh, with a material use and, uh, and consumption uh, that is uh, minimal damage to the environment um, and, and focusing on uh, uh, recyclability and um, uh, good use of resources. Uh, if you translate that to to tangible measures, is that the comfort of a building uh, provides. Uh, indoor climate that promotes health, comfort, and a sense of well-being. Uh, previous uh, presentations have all addressed that. Um, I will skip through these more uh, quickly because I will I will uh, focus more on comfort later. Energy and environment are not part of this um, presentation, but for those who are interested, um, you can go to the website of Active House and um, look into those more. The website is activehouse.info. Um, so, the Active House Radar, um, Marco touched upon this, um, this is where the performance of an Active House is um, demonstrated and can be used as a, as a communication tool. Uh, it focuses uh, for the comfort aspect on daylight, a thermal environment, indoor air quality uh, and the acoustic quality. For energy, it focuses on the energy demand of a building, the primary energy performance and the sustainable energy supply and for our environment on the sustainable construction and material use uh, and the freshwater consumption. Um, in this presentation, I will focus more on these four. Um, a nice thing about the Active House Radar is that in an instant you can see how well a building performs. For example, in this radar you can see a, a light green part and a dark green part. And this is an actual radar for a renovation project where uh, the performance of the old building was put in uh, and uh, that is shown in the in the light green uh, part and you can see that the energy performance was quite bad um, and also the material use was not very much uh, looked into but after renovation the uh, daylight was improved the thermal environment was very much improved indoor air quality and acoustic quality were also much improved of course the energy demand and performance uh, of the whole building uh, energy wise was much improved and because it's a, a retrofit or renovation of an existing building the material aspect has a lot of recyclability and circularity of the material so those were also much improved and in in one glance you can see how much the building has improved compared to the uh, the original state and this is also uh, therefore an instrument to uh, to 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 convey the quality of the building to uh, non uh, building professionals so as i said i will focus more now on uh, how daylight and thermal environment indoor air quality and acoustic quality are assessed um, and used uh, within active house um, Active House has two ways of um, measuring the performance of a building. It has both qualitative and quantitative um, measures. Um, this is an example for uh, the qualitative criteria for, for, uh, for example, energy demand, uh, where questions that are asked that are difficult to put into numbers such as uh, have the chosen products and construction solution been evaluated from a cost-effective life cost performance and maintenance view. Um, the, 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 the reason for this is that these have uh, 
uh, a direct influence on the uh, quality of the building and also how the building is is perceived and used by the by the, the building users but it's very difficult to say well this is a, a five or uh, well put a number to it um, and what else active house also has and and this is a, an aspect that um, separates it from uh, from com uh, different uh, sustainability uh, labels is that uh, there is a, uh, a weighing of the performance. Um, for example, if you have a building or a dwelling with uh, a number of rooms, and some of these rooms are used more intensively than others, um, it makes sense to put more emphasis uh, on having a good quality in the, the rooms that are used most intensively, uh, rather than uh, try and uh, figure out how to, to create a, a, a very average building uh, over all all the different rooms or or to put it differently um, it is uh, if you have a, a, a house that has a very good performance overall but there are one or two rooms that are rarely used and have very bad performance it is a shame to um, to punish the, the 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 whole building score for those few rooms um, in this example this is for the daylight factor you can see that the um, the living room, for example, um, has an average daylight score of of uh, day factor, uh, daylight factor of uh, of two, um, and it is used during a regular average day for three hours by three people. Um, so it has a, a weighted score of eighteen, uh, while a bedroom for parents is uh, during daylight hours is rarely used, only half an hour per day by two people. So it is much more important to focus on having a good quality uh, in the indoor air, uh, or sorry, a good daylight quality in the living room than, than focusing on creating uh, a lot of daylight in the bedroom for the parents because, well, the living room is much more intensively used. So it makes more sense to focus on that. And this goes for all the comfort aspects. So if we then focus on daylight, and these are the um, qualitative aspects. Um, so the, the, the view, for example, is, is uh, relevant. Or if there are different uh, surroundings, uh, one of them is uh, looking into a parking lot, for example, while another direction looks into the park. It is, of course, much more uh, nicely to, to look uh, towards the park rather than to the, the parking lot. Um, the visual transmittance, glare management, uh, daylight in secondary rooms, um, the blinding of bedrooms, so that uh, especially during the, the summer months, it is, uh, it is preferable to have a, a really dark room if you're trying to sleep. Um, so can you fully block out uh, daylight in the bedrooms? Room reflectance in single or multiple openings for the uh, easy distribution uh, of, of daylight throughout the, the room and the simulation method. I will get back to that later. So there are two ways to assess the daylight quality of a building. Uh, the first one is a sort of a standardized method and uses the daylight factor um, where you assess uh, how much of which part of the, the room uh, has a daylight factor that exceeds 300 lux and it can be either either 70 60 50 or uh, 40 percent uh, of the occupied space and this is uh, because you uh, use a standardized uh, illumination um, this is also a standardized method uh, way of calculating and it doesn't um, really look into the specific um, design or the uh, location or, or uh, surroundings of the building um, while well, if you take the second option, uh, these are more dynamic uh, calculations where you actually use the building design itself with the, 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 with the, 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 the occupants and the use and the, 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 the localized weather files to uh, have a more detailed um, calculation of, of what the, uh, the performance is of the different rooms uh, with the boundary conditions and the, the, of the levels being similar to the, the first option. 
Um, for thermal environment, it's the same. Uh, we have the um, qualitative aspects, this time uh, with individual control. This is, of course, uh, already mentioned in the earlier presentations today. Uh, night cooling, whether to, it's, it's, it's uh, possible to um, get rid of uh, uh, built-up heat during the day. Um, overheating in winter, especially with uh, the more uh, newer buildings, which are very well insulated and very airtight, uh, it, it can become a problem, uh, even when it's very cold outside, um, that there is overheating um, in winter because the, the solar radiation is, the sun is low and, and um, is still quite a bit of power, especially if you have large windows and if it's um, sometimes it's, it's not possible to open a window or if you do open a window, it gets very uncomfortable drafts. Um, so it is a design issue. Uh, the sister interface, is it logical? Is it understandable? Um, and uh, if you have, for example, natural ventilation or mechanical ventilation, uh, do the uh, ventilation uh, grills cause uh, drafts, uh, uncomfortable air speeds? Um, there's a difference in the assessment of the thermal environment uh, between either um, naturally ventilated rooms or uh, rooms with air conditioning. Um, based on the um, expectancy of occupants, uh, rooms with air conditions have narrower um, comfort limits. So if you know that a building is air conditions, you expect the temperature to be at a certain level and you uh, therefore also ex have, have uh, less tolerance for, uh, let's not call them extremes, but uh, for higher or lower temperatures. While if you have a building that is naturally ventilated, you can use the, uh, the running mean outdoor temperature. So if, um, if, for example, there's a heat wave and you know that over the past few days, um, the outdoor temperature is very warm. You accept that the indoor temperature is also warm because that's sort of what you expect. You, uh, you, you, you maybe wear shorts or a shirt with uh, short sleeves. Um, um, that is, and and um, we expect the bedrooms to be a bit cooler than the regular uh, living quarters, uh, especially because uh, when you fall asleep, your body prefers to have a, a, a lower indoor temperature. It's easier to fall asleep that way. And in, in all cases, um, the users should be able to change the settings to their own liking. So if they want it cooler or warmer, that is something that is recommended. Uh, and of course, also in winter, um, it's the other way around. If it's very cold outside, there is a, a, an expectancy to have at least a, a, a minimum temperature so if it, um, if you can if you are able to to have a, an indoor temperature of at least 21 degrees in winter that is the best score um, and of course even here um, and especially with the, the current energy crisis uh, maybe even uh, recommended that people choose lower settings but it should be a choice of the user and not necessarily um, a default setting and these requirements should be met for a minimum of 95 percent of the occupant time uh, and uh, same with daylight, uh, these scores are also weighted on the, on the actual use uh, of the room. For uh, indoor air quality, uh, the, the qualitative aspects are, are inv individual control. This is uh, also a, a mental aspect. Um, the dampness uh, to get rid of uh, excess uh, humidity. Um, the materials that are used uh, within the building itself should be low emitting, uh, so no uh, VOCs and, and formaldehydes and other um, harmful substances should, should be emitted by uh, building materials. Um, the kitchen hood uh, should have an exhaust that is preferably directed to the outside, which somewhat uh, contradicts with the energy performance or the energy desire, uh, performance desire, um, but for the indoor uh, air quality that is prefer preferable. Um, and if the um, building is situated, uh, for example, next to a highway or an industrial area, um, it should be uh, that the indoor air uh, is, is filtered before it's uh, supplied to the indoor environment. Um, 
the uh, indoor the, the the quality of the indoor air is uh, subject to the the, the the CO2 concentration. So we measure air quality by the CO2 concentration, um, not necessarily because that is the most uh, important one, but it is the easiest and cheapest one to measure, and it is generally a rather good indication of the overall air quality. Especially if people are indoors or inside a room, they produce uh, um, uh, CO2. So if the uh, CO2 concentration, this CO2 concentration therefore also is an indicator of the presence of people. And so if the CO2 rises, then if ventilation should increase also. Um, and the, um, the concentration is is a measure of the uh, ppm above outdoor concentration. Um, where I am in the Netherlands, the, uh, the the CO2 concentration outdoors is about 420, I think, 415. So best level is 815 in total, um, with the, the worst performing is about 1500 ppm of CO2 uh, in total. Um, as the last uh, indicator for comfort is the acoustic quality, um, where the idea is that you should not have uh, noises that are uh, a nuisance, and that is mainly uh, noises from from sources where you have no influence on, such as um, unwanted noise from outside, from traffic, or from installations. Um, of course, uh, bedrooms and study rooms should be more quiet or quieter than, uh, for example, living quarters. Um, uh, acoustic privacy uh, can be an issue, especially between neighbors. Um, and um, there's a, a desire to have uh, an, uh, an external space where it is especially quiet, where you can sort of withdraw uh, and, and, and relax. Um, there are limit values where the best uh, level is uh, for inside and outside noise is about 25 decibels, which is just above hearing level. It is very quiet. Um, and um, acoustic privacy is, is uh, based on the quality of the uh, separating layers of construction. Um, all these limit values are, are basically based on uh, ISO standards, so um, they should not be uh, very uh, new to uh, to uh, building professionals, um, and if the, uh, the the assessment of this is uh, once the building is completed and there may be questions whether or not these limits are uh, met, then you can test these um, these these levels by uh, either uh, hiring a professional, but of course that is something uh, quite cumbersome and can be expensive. So you also have um, apps for most smartphones where you can measure the uh, acoustic quality and if those measurements might um, uh, give concern for uh, for uh, the, the, the whether or not these, these, these limits are met, then you can go back to your builder or uh, file a complaint somewhere else. Um, I will finish off with um, these active house scores. Um, it is possible, it is not done yet, but uh, um, you can have um, the active house score for uh, daylight, for thermal environment or indoor quality or, or acoustic quality um, tested and, um, and, and assessed by uh, the active house um, organization and so you can get a sort of a, a quality label for example for a building where you say well this is a, a standardized product or building that we have um, and we have put a considerable attention towards I don't know for the indoor air quality that if you have this product in in this combination then you can have a, a certain active house score um, uh, of course it would be best if you go back uh, to the the um, the full radar, where you have uh, you can have a, an active house label for the entire building, and you can have this formalized into an active house uh, label. Uh, yes, I think that's my presentation. <laughs>